Okay, so today's science lesson is on drawing ray diagrams. Um, this can get a little bit tricky. Um, so bottom line, when you're drawing a ray diagram, um, you're, what you're trying to figure out is what type of image is the mirror or lens going to make. And there's four things to look at when you have an image. The size, is it the image bigger or smaller? The attitude, is it right side up or upside down? Location, is the image behind or in front of the mirror? And the type, which you get from the, um, well these two in particular, you get the type is either going to be real or virtual, and that depends on the attitude and the location. So let's just jump right to it. How do you draw where the image is going to be and what it's going to look like? All you got to remember is two things. Parallel focal point, focal point, parallel. So just quickly going over what we have in the diagram here. Here is our concave mirror because it curves in. Concave, like a cave, goes in. Um, through the middle, we have an imaginary line that we draw called the principal axis. That's through the mir middle of the uh, concave mirror. Every concave mirror has a certain focal point. That's where all the reflected light rays will meet. Just like we did in the lab. When all the light rays met at a certain point, that's the focal point. And here's our object, just uh, an arrow. Here's what we do. Okay, so all we're going to do is draw two incident rays and their two reflected light rays to figure out where the image is. First, we draw an incident ray going from the top of the object and that incident ray is going to bounce back. It's going to go in parallel and we're going to show it bounce back through the focal point. Of course there's a ton of light rays that bounce back off of here, but all we need to show is the one that goes parallel and that will bounce back through the focal point. So that's that reflected ray right there. And then the next ray that we show will go from the top of the object through the focal point and will bounce back parallel. So again, parallel focal point focal point, parallel. When I'm saying parallel, I'm talking about that it's, it's bouncing back parallel to this imaginary principal axis right here. So here are our two reflected light rays. This one reflecting back and this one reflecting back. To show where the image is, well it's where the reflected light rays meet. So the top of the arrow, which is where we're trying to light from, is going to end up right here. So that is where the top of the arrow is going to be. And you'll notice, since it's on the bottom like that, it will be upside down. So there's the top of the arrow, the rest of the arrow will go right here. That is our image in red. So what do we know about the image? First, in terms of size, there's the object, there's the image, it's obviously smaller. The attitude, meaning right side up or upside down, it's upside down, upside down, you can just call it that, USD. The location, is it in front of the mirror or behind the mirror? And it is in front of the mirror. You might be asking, well how can you have an image behind the mirror? Well actually, the mirror that you probably use mostly, um, flat mirrors that you look at in the morning or when you check your hair or whatever, those are flat mirrors and the image is actually behind the mirror in those cases. Okay, uh, to get the type of the mirror, is it real or virtual? Well, whenever it's upside down and in front of the mirror, it's a real image. Upside down images are real. A real image is uh, always that way. Well, actually not always, but in grade 8, it is always that way. So, there you are. That's the four characteristics of an image, and we've defined it for that right there. If you were to actually do this with the concave mirror, be away from the focal point, take a look at it, you would see yourself upside down. And say in the, in the curvy part of a spoon, you would see yourself upside down, and that's why. Okay. So, on the worksheet that you'll get, you'll have to be able to do 
um, the next one where the object is a little closer to the focal point, see what happens to the size, attitude, location, and type. Then you'll do it for when the object is at the focal point. Something really interesting happens there. I won't give it all away. And then we um, are going to look at a situation where the object is inside the focal point. So it's really, really close to the mirror. What's going to happen there? This one is a little bit tricky. So then we switch to a convex lens which bulges out. And now convex lens is a little bit different in that um, we found out that in a convex lens when the light rays hit it from here, it bounces outwards. Not inwards, but outwards. But it still has a focal point. If you have these outward rays and you were to trace them back behind the mirror, it's like there's an imaginary starting point behind the mirror where they come from. That's the focal point, which is, in case of a convex mirror, it's actually behind the mirror. I'll show you what I mean with our four lines. Again, parallel focal point. So draw a line from the top of the arrow, parallel, and have it bounce back through the focal point. Now this is where you're going to think, okay, well how is it going to bounce back through the focal point? This is where we're going to have to trace the path from behind the mirror. Now of course the light is not coming from here, but the light ray that bounces hitting the mirror here is going to bounce out. And it's, it's like it's coming from, it's like it's coming from behind the mirror. So what we should do with a dotted line to show it Dot, dot, dot line used to show that it's not really coming from there, but the path is from there. There'd be a light ray that seems like it's coming from behind the mirror at that angle, and it comes out like this. That is the reflected light ray. Okay, it seems like it's coming from behind the mirror from that point there. Parallel, focal point. Now focal point parallel. So now we're going to draw a line from here that's going to go through the focal point. Let me get this arrow straightened out. Okay, so we draw a line from there that seems like it's coming from there. So it actually only hits here. And then we can trace the image back to there. To trace the light ray that seems like it's going to hit that focal point. And it's going to bounce back parallel. Parallel focal point, focal point parallel. So it's going to bounce back parallel like this. There we go. Okay, so again, the image is where the two reflected light rays meet. Well, here's our two reflected light rays, that line, that line. And we're looking at it thinking, well, they don't meet at all. And they don't on this side of the mirror. So what we have to do is do those pretending imaginary lines from behind the mirror and see where they would have met behind the mirror. So we extend this reflected light ray behind the mirror. Should be using a ruler, but get a little sloppy here. And this reflected light ray behind the mirror. And the point where they meet, which is right here, is where the image is going to be. So the image is right here. In this case, the size, there it is, there that is, is smaller, attitude, right side up this time, location, it is behind the mirror, and the type, well if it's right side up, and it's behind the mirror, that is what you call a 
virtual image. Okay, uh, you'll have to do the next one on your own of what happens when we move the object closer to a convex lens um, and sorry, convex mirror, and you'll you'll be able to figure out what happens um, with any type of object, with any type of mirror. Um, close and you're far, what part of the four characteristics, you'll be able to figure that all out um, on the worksheet. Hope you have a good time with that worksheet and we'll talk to you later.